We've all heard of the phrase, the thrill of the hunt. Now, until today, I believed in this phrase. I subscribed to its deception wholeheartedly, and I'll tell you why this all changed. The phrase's very nature glorifies the experience held by a carnivore. A Tyrannosaurus Rex, for example. A life of unrelenting, violent encounters. This isn't thrill. Thrill is spending every waking moment overcome with incomparable terror, hyper-anxious of every faint rustle, every wavering shadow, and every whisper in the wind. For a herbivore, thrill is around every single corner. Now get comfortable, but not too comfortable, and let me show you what I mean. I can't decide if this vast open land is good because I can see predators or bad because they can see me. It's a bit of a paradoxical situation. Oh, there. This time, luck sided with our trike. I can't really tell what that is. The predator had revealed themselves first. A hungry mape, desperately digging for food. Any carnivore already this ravenous would jump at the opportunity for a larger meal. To stay in the vicinity of this mape would be a death wish within itself. So as soon as the chance came to leave the area, I took it. To the mape, I was never even there. Before long, a different type of hunt began. The hunt for essentials, food and water. Rivers such as this one are home to all sorts of predators, but crossing it was essential to our hunt. Yet again, it seemed luck had sided with our trike. The river would even be safe enough to take a drink from. Now traversing through a vivid green birch forest, the second half of our hunt continued. We need food. I'm heading to a berry bush. But like all things in the life of a herbivore, it was never going to be that simple. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh my god, right there. Without hesitation, I dived into the nearest bush. I wasn't quite sure what I'd seen, but I was fearing the worst. A young Utah raptor, prowling the undergrowth of the forest, in search of any opportunity to hone its newfound hunting skills. Oh man. I watched as it passed, just meters from my bush. I wonder if I'm able to sneak off this way. He must have heard me run that way, went to chase me, but didn't realize I doubled back for a bush. Is this food source up here compromised? <laughs> I'm really hoping not. I thought it best to wait and watch the berry bush until I was sure. And eventually, our trike plucked up the courage to venture out into the open air. Hopefully that Utah isn't super, super smart and is just waiting here for a herbivore to come and eat from its food source. Although enjoying a meal, our trike's senses were heightened. This hyper-awareness would alert it of any nearby movements. <gasps> definitely heard footsteps just then. Definitely, definitely heard footsteps. My first instinct was to run straight back to the bush where I'd come from. And still alarmed, I took cover. I hope I'm wrong. I heard like a twig snap. Whatever was nearby could have watched me enter the bush. So I decided it best to leave. In the head of this hill. High ground seems like an unlikely place for someone to go. By ascending this hill, I would remain hidden, but also have access to a vantage over the whole area. The plan worked immediately. <gasps> With hesitant glances from my hilltop retreat, I spotted there in the field alone, the same Utah Raptor. I would watch and I would wait. And there he goes. I am gonna head off in the other direction. <laughs> Can you blame me? And so off I went, guided by the early evening glow that sporadically permeated the dense green forest. And as this radiant brilliance began to fade, so did the color. A thick mist was about to roll in, and with it, brought rain. This would be the first environmental challenge presented to our young trike. The rain would introduce darkness, dampness, and cold. This tribulation was halted for a second as we received some good news. And we are adolescent. 
reality would quell my optimism fairly quickly and would transform it into something like distress. What was that? What on earth was that? As I cowered in a bush, horrifying silhouettes moved through the trees. I caught glimpses of various shapes, each more horrifying than the last. Until finally, the terrible creature reared its head. An Argentinosaurus, a herbivore. We were safe, although I did still think it best to leave. That thing is too loud, he's going to attract a lot of attention. I'm going. I was terrified then, I heard like huge footsteps. Oh my god. This time there was something to fear. I'd spotted a carnivore in the nearby clearing. Please don't come this way. I think it hears the Argentinosaurus maybe? Unless it heard me? <gasps> and as my new acquaintance moved through the trees, it was obvious what was about to happen. If I would have stayed alongside that thing, I could have been dead. Yep, it's getting attacked. I knew it would. Selfishly, but with no other choice, I used this moment as a distraction and left. The rain lashed at the ground and the wind now howled stronger than ever as our trike finally reached its destination. We're done and I'm gone. Once again, our young trike was on the move forced to traverse a land that grew ever darker and ever more dangerous. Oh, <sighs> being prey is tense. It was no surprise that our next discovery was welcomed. A cave. Hey, a little cave to shelter from the rain. With only a faint static-like sound to signal anything of bad weather, our trike had found a place to rest. The early morning light ushered in a sense of hope, and even as the one place I'd been able to call a home was left in my wake, there was an air of promise, and if only for a moment, the earth stood still, exhausted, as if it were regaining its breath from the labour of yesterday's storm. And into what seemed like a completely different forest, our trike pressed onward. Eventually, normal procedures resumed. I'm really not sure whether crossing this water here is going to be a good idea. While the surrounding beauty was apparent, I was now fixated on my next meal, and perhaps more importantly, how to get there. I hesitantly approached an estuary so often filled with predators. And while we're making this crossing, why don't we take some time to have some fun Triceratops facts. Fact 1. The Triceratops only has two genuine horns. The third, shorter horn on its nose is made from keratin, a softer protein, and wouldn't have been much use when fighting. Fact 2. The world's largest Triceratops skeleton is aptly named Big John and measures 7.15 meters in length. The skeleton is over 60% complete and recently sold at auction for $7.7 .7 million. Fact 3. The Triceratops lived in the very late Cretaceous period, 68 to 65 million years ago. This makes it one of the last non-avian dinosaurs to have ever existed. And finally, fact four, Triceratops lived alongside Tyrannosaurus rex. This makes it likely that the two would have encountered each other. There is suggestive evidence that they fought, but we can't say for sure. And would you look at that? Perfect timing. We're just about to make it across the river. That was nerve wracking to say the very least. Not for us it wasn't. We had fun facts to keep us company. We were chilling. All right, well, thank you for joining me. Back to our story. But there's our berry bush. After crossing the river, we'd encounter more than just our berry bush. Oh my God. Don't look this way, don't look this way. Did I get seen there? I made a dash in the opposite direction, using the tree line for cover. That's a rex. That is a rex that definitely heard me run into that bush. Is it safe to come out? Being so desperate for food, I had to at least try. I hate this. I hate this. I don't think he's stuck around. Doesn't mean to say I'm not terrified. I'd watch from the reeds. The berry bush is there. I just need to make damn sure that the coast is clear. But there, in the one angle I hadn't kept an eye on. Oh, <gasps> he crossed. I didn't even see that. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. He sat down there. <gasps> I really thought he'd guard the berry bush there. So in plain sight of an adult Rex, I ate. Definitely needed the food. That's for sure. He's still sat there. I need to keep an eye on him. And any other potential things coming from this way. This berry bush is very open. Oh my god, up there. And yet another Rex. I decided it was in my best interest to leave the area. We need to head to the water source here. 
The situation with the water here is more of the same because it is just some tiny little place in a vast expanse of land with the only available drinking water. This river is contaminated by the sea, it's all salt water, we can't drink from there. I'm actually going to head to the pond part of it rather than the stream because in my experience less players drink at the pond. I was granted another moment of tranquility in a world full of chaos. Uh, I hear something questing behind that rock. Really want to check what it is. Whatever it is, I don't see it, but I know there was something there. As I ventured on through the landscape, the noises didn't cease. Again, I surveyed the area. Nothing. Nothing at all. Wait. I know that noise. Yep, right there. <gasps> and that's why you don't drink from that little river down there. Good job I went to the pond. There must have been a Dinosuchus waiting in that tiny little stream. That could have been us. Simple choices, like drinking from a slightly less popular area, make a huge difference. Jesus. Mere minutes had passed, and I was again hearing things. Oh. Right there. Oh my god. We've been attacked. A raptor that definitely fancied its chances. Although still young, I adopted a brave face. Stay away. Stay away. I watched helplessly as the raptor latched on to my back. The first course of action was shaking off the aggressor. Uh oh. I hit it. I hit it. Oh, I hit it again. And the second, punishment. It won't have much stamina, I'm finishing it off. I'm gonna finish it off if it's the last thing I do. I don't think it has a lot of stamina. He ran into a rock. Oh, that was nearly it. He's gotta be running out of stamina, has to be. For a while I remained on the tail of the raptor. Until finally, after turning a corner, it reached a ledge. You think you're so slick being up there, huh? Time to bait a pounce. He's coming for me. We've got this, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this. Yes! Mission success. Oh, just like that he's dealt with. Okay. In fact, this area is a bit scary as is. I've seen a lot of things here, more here than anywhere else, so time to leave. The plan was to climb and climb until I no longer could. Gradually, the temperature grew colder and the air grew thinner. And upon reaching a satisfying enough place, I lay to rest again. Whew. Before long, our trike was back on the move and it was time to look for food. At this point, I was fairly confident that I knew the location of a berry bush. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. As it turns out, that was overconfidence. Where is it? I had looked everywhere. I swear there's one here. As they say, if at first you don't succeed, give up. Hmm. The feeling of defeat was quickly replaced by terror. The beating of wings and a flash across the sky could only mean one thing. That is very bad if that thing sees me. Okay, no matter with the berry bush, because I know where another one is. Oh, look at that. I was back on the menu. I am running to a bush. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh my god. It's just there. Oh. An adult has a gop to Riggs. Am I safe here? Just about. I can't move inside that leaves the area. If it sees me, I am good as dead. There he is. Yet again. Please get out of here. Please clear off. And it did. So I left. I think it's safe to move now. I'm at least going to navigate from bush to bush. Sprint in between them, making sure we're safe. Something tells me it's gone. Um, I'm going to trust my instincts. Oh, 
It's there. It landed again. With minimal cover, I stayed completely still. Uh, where can I go? I'm gonna have to run there. It's gone behind that little rock. Don't trust your instincts is the, is the message. It's flying again, I hear it. There, right there. I just dove off the cliff. Oh, and this is a pretty long stretch with no bushes. This time, the Hatsugopsarix was actually gone. Only to be replaced by a close relative, a Quetzalcoatlus. Also hunting, just my luck. Did it see me? Did it see me? I think it saw me. It saw me. It definitely saw me. Oh god. I did a lot of damage. He's getting stamina back and then he's coming straight back for me. No doubt about it. I'm drinking from here as soon as I can. And just as I predicted... It's here. It's here. It's here. <clears throat> alright, alright. What can I do? This giraffe-sized terror would plan to hover above me and peck. Nope, that hurt. Being still so young, I wasn't confident I had the power to deal with the Quetzal. I don't think that's going to do much damage. I'm running off this way. It is chasing me. Hold on. But it wasn't giving me much choice. Ah! It again went to collect stamina before another attack. Between battles, I tried to heal. And it's coming for me. But was never granted that much time to actually do so. Uh oh. Another trade. May you be reminded that I'd never found a berry bush and was still low on food. I need to eat or he's going to starve me to death. Go for it now. It flew off. As expected. Stay away. With the ticking clock of starvation, I often found myself the aggressor in our battles. But since I couldn't fly, that was proving difficult. Ah, you're annoying. Oh, it's going to stalk me to the ends of the earth. It's landing over there. I'm going while I can. I'm going right now while I can. Oh, I didn't look. And then he fell and died. It's here. I can hear it. Bushes, go. Bushes, go, go, go. If I was to survive this, I had to lose it in the forest. Right there, hovering. The Quetzal Coatlas has a keen eyesight. This allows it to locate its food from high above the ground. And this one was looking for me. And it's hiding in the thickest part of the bush. Unable to spot me from the sky, it began soaring through the forest. It's got to be close. I sat for minutes, listening to the beating of wings all around me. Oh, I'm going to die of starvation if I don't go soon. I need to work out exactly where the berry bush is. I think it's... I just don't even know. I need to move slowly. Very slowly through the bush. But my hunger is very low. And there's a killer giant bird after me. Couldn't be much worse right now. And then to my relief, the skies were finally vacant. No noise could be heard. Peace was restored. I didn't want to let my guard down too quickly, however. If he's a smart player, he'll go between the berry bushes and make sure I don't eat. Praying that doesn't happen. This looks like a place where a berry bush would be. My search for food was interrupted by darkness and I decided that I just had to get to where I knew a berry bush was. I have to race to this berry bush. I'm not going to make it, am I? If you knew where I was planning to go, you'd probably think that I wasn't going to make it either. It's a race against the clock. Come on, let's go. We ain't got a long little trike. Almost as if to reflect my dire situation, it began to rain. This kind of adds to the miserable situation we're in. Makes sense. I don't care about predators, I don't care about anything. All I care about is food. And so I persevered, sprinting through these conditions, fueled by the thought of a much needed meal. Oh, miserable weather. 
for a miserable situation. At long last, I crested the final hill. Oh, what is wrong with me? Don't worry, we got food now. Jesus. More scary than any predator we've had so far. Just finding a berry bush. After being pinned down by a Quetzalcoatlus for such a large portion of our trike's life, the persistent rain didn't feel like a burden at all, and it even began to complement my feelings of relaxation and relief. Conquering our hunger and then quenching our thirst had actually left us in a pretty good situation. So as morning approached, I now had a plan to maintain this newfound era of peace. And upon climbing this mountain, I found perhaps the most tranquil place I'd ever been. Even the skies themselves had decided to work with us this time. And there's the rain. It has stopped. Our trike spent many a wonderful moment atop the mountain. And as the sun grew ever higher in the sky, the atmosphere remained mild, quiet, almost wistful. The deep ambers had faded to grey, which then in turn gave way to vivid blue. Our trike even made its way to the summit of the mountain. This act, whether purposefully or not, coincided with my peaking optimism for the rest of our trike's life. But as they say, what goes up must eventually come down. We'd now left the comforts of our mountaintop retreat behind and were now vulnerable to the will of others yet again. Life simply can't remain so still for so long. Hello there. Interesting. <laughs> we're definitely getting too big to be attacked by just random Utah raptors like this. But this Utah raptor was clearly starving. And he's attacking. All right. Okay. I had to let the Utah know that what it had done was not okay. But hunger is a motivational state that induces aggression, sometimes to the animal's own detriment. Wow, well. Damn. <laughs> So leaving the aftermath behind, I left more or less unscathed. Soon after, I heard footsteps again. Oh, phew. A parasaurolophus. We exchanged glances and said our goodbyes. But as soon as I turned away, I saw something that could actually give me a problem. A Spinosaurus. Oh, he's questing, so he's definitely not fully grown. Ah, yeah, I see that now. He's not that big. He's no threat when we're this big, I don't think. <laughs> Rather unexpectedly, the air grew cold and a ghostly sheet engulfed the landscape. It was snowing. Oh, I like the snow. I wish it stuck to the floor. That'd be really cool. There's much debate surrounding specifically Triceratops and whether it was ectothermic or endothermic. Regardless, our trike is in the snow and he's just going to have to suck it up. Oh, looking across the water, I was able to confirm that the Spinosaurus wasn't as large as I initially thought. It appeared to recognize that it was no match. He just jumped. <laughs> I can't help but think that if that Spinosaurus was an adult, I'd be on the menu right now. Hey, sub it up. Another installment of good news. If the Triceratops was exothermic, he'd be struggling to survive in the snow and definitely wouldn't need to eat this much. But that's not my debate to have. Eventually the snow passed and the mist also began to clear up. That's blue sky, all right. We'd survived the snowstorm and it was now time to go and graze in the plains. On the way, we were reunited with an old friend, a mape, not so dangerous anymore. Yeah, I need water. On the opposite bank lay a Dinosuchus. Good job I saw that early. He probably lives in these waters. If I was to put money on it, I'd say he's not the only one. I hadn't been by the river very long, 
and it was already confirmed that there were two crocodilian inhabitants. A combination of our trike's sheer size and the fact that we were drinking from shallow water should keep us safe enough. Tell you what I might do, I might go and hold that berry bush and call it my own. Feeling confident after growing to a notable size, I needed somewhere to reside. I was forced to turn around as I spotted a large Giganotosaurus asleep next to berry bush A. Yeah, let's not claim that one. I'm going to claim the one further down here. Option B was clear, so I made my home. The interspecific competition between herbivores over food sources such as this could spark a fight. Basically, I wasn't sharing. <laughs> I know you're only small, but we can't share. Our trike lay to rest next to the bush, which was good for nothing more except from attracting a Dilophosaurus. And if I didn't stand up, I'd be dead. So I did. Were you about to try something? Even after I turned to face the Dilo, it still wanted to test the waters. And after trading a few blows, the Dilophosaurus stepped back to take a breather. That's right, that's right, those horns hurt, I'm guessing. Its strategy was to wait for me to swing at it with my horns, and then attack in the small window between doing so. And in all fairness, it worked a couple times. There's a fairy here. Annoyingly, the Therizinosaurus was able to feast on my berry bush in the background, but I did land a couple good hits on the Dilo. Just enough to send it away for good. <clears throat> did I scare him off? I looked across the field at the berry thief, hoping to signal that there was no more free food to be found here. It was now time to find myself a drink. But down by the river, there was some crocodile chaos. Currently occupied with the Kentro. He seems to want to fight him. There's one just there, you can see him under the water. They're only small. Considering my now massive size, I thought it unlikely that I'd be attacked at this river. But for some reason, I was wrong. It only took one swing of the horns to deter the Dinosuchus. It was safe to say it had picked the wrong target. That's probably more power than you felt, huh? <laughs> You're not used to fighting trikes. And back here we are. No. That isn't allowed. The Kentro was back, but hey, boundaries are boundaries. Get out of here. I'll send you away. I gave the Kentro a warning hit. My berry bush. It didn't work, so it came back for another. I could have killed it, but I chose not to. I don't want to have to kill you. It was just a warning. This food source is basically depleted. So I think it's time to find another one and call that my home for a while. So off I headed to berry bush A from earlier. Oh, right. A new berry bush to protect. <laughs> but I was in need of water again. The closest water is in this crater. So yeah, it was happening. We were heading in to Impact Crater. A pack of three like that could probably cause some damage. I just want to drink, folks. And so I began to drink, feeling equipped enough to fight off the danger that lurked in every corner. You know what? I'm feeling strong enough to go and claim Crater's berry bush as my own. I might not leave the crater. <laughs> might be a little challenge in itself. And here we are. Our new home. It's on 100% as well. The survivability in here is looking promising in the minute. In fact, I was so confident I'd survive that I got bored and started drawing rockets in the sand. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh. Oh, was that offensive to you? Did you get offended by what I drew? A pack of three Uteranas, clearly hungry and willing to take on a near fully grown trike to get some food. And we've been attacked. There it is. 
I'm being circled. All right, here we go. UTs surrounded every side of me. And if they played this right, our big trike could be in some trouble. This was going to be a challenge. My attackers knew that I was weak from behind. This meant that turning to face them was essential. Surrounding me was definitely the best strategy for them, as I wouldn't be able to face all of them at once. Every time I turned to face them, they'd run away, not wanting to face the horns. So far, I'd done a good job of fending them off, but I needed to land some damage of my own. I managed to sandwich one between me and the water, and with nowhere else to run, I landed my first blow. This must have sparked the UT's aggression, because they got a lot closer, and then the floodgates opened. I had been waiting to use my charge. This could inflict a lot of damage. You're lucky. You're lucky I missed that charge. I'm chasing you right out of this place. Get out of town. Get out of town. I didn't even have to land the charge to scare the U2 runners pack off. And don't come back. Our trike sat down to rest. Confident. We were the kings of Crater. Do you not know I'm the crater man? <laughs> I'm the crater guy. This is what I do. That's what I live for. It's in my blood. I'm a cratorian. I even went so far to prove it as to take an afternoon nap right in the middle of crater. However, this did spark some interest. Look at that. I wonder if they attacked me. Kind of want them to, you know. Teach him a lesson once and for all. That he's crouching. He thinks I don't see him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he messed up. He really thought. Nothing quite lets you know you're the king like a good old assassination attempt while you're asleep. But then an Argentinosaurus entered Crater, and I had a kingdom to protect. I'm not backing down if he wants my berry bush. <laughs> hey, hey. Arjun, if you want this berry bush, you're going to have to go through me. Even though I was outmatched for size, I stood my ground. No. And to my genuine surprise. Yeah, you best eat those flowers. You best eat those flowers. That's what I thought. Because this is mine. And there it is. We are now as big as we'll ever be. Our trike was now in the center of crater, uncontested and fully grown. Oh man, things are just getting started. Ooh. It was at this time that we were visited by some old friends. No. After signaling for them to leave, I was attacked from behind. I was, however, able to turn quickly and reply. Yeah, that hurt, I bet. At this point, I'd had enough and was desperate to get off a charge. Bang. Hit him with the charge. Now you gotta get out of here. I'm sure you do. After taking the brunt of a charge, they decided to leave. I'm chasing them out of crater once and for all. They're too annoying. And seriously don't think of coming back. We really cleared crater out. Other than that Argent. And that raptor. Never mind, the raptor was just passing through. The next evening, I'd left Crater and was keeping my eye on the nearby dinosaurs. A Rex and a Dilophosaurus. The Dilo let off an aggressive call and I knew what was about to happen. Does he want to fight me? Oh, he might. I kept an eye on the Rex in the background as I fought off the smaller attacker. And there it was, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. He'd arrived. For some reason the Rex didn't get involved straight away and watched as his friend crumpled at my feet. The Rex even sat and watched as another dialogue got involved. But then, finally, he'd had enough of watching and came towards the fight. 
Not wanting to take any chances, I hit the Rex with an immediate charge. And with the Dilo still hot on my heels, biting at my ankles, the Rex turned to face me. It hit me with a large bite and broke my bones, but now it was weak. I didn't want to let the Rex go, but I had no choice. And with the Dilo still here, I was forced to defend myself. The Rex, on such little help, was able to head off into the sunset. Realistically, on this server, fighting should have stopped after I killed the blue Dilo. And I wasn't sure if the Rex was grouped with the Dilo, but his constant aggressive calling made me attack it. And after a while of pursuing the Rex, I finally gave up and turned on the Dilo. Alright then. You can have it if you want it. But then, out of the blue, another appeared. You got friends. With my health already halfway depleted, this was making me kind of nervous. Luckily, the Dilos seemed to take shifts in attacking me, which made just facing one and sticking with it kind of easy. Finally, the orange Dilophosaurus was getting weak, yeah, he's nearly dead. But was immediately replaced with the white one and a new green one. Now I'm not one to complain about rule breaks or mix packing or anything of the sort. In fact, it gives me extra content. So I'd like to take this chance to personally thank this Dilo pack. That uh, Rex got off the hook. I was now, however, starting to get dangerously weak. With four minutes left on the server restart count, I headed into a corner and prepared my final stand. I only had to do this for two minutes as all fighting must stop at the two minute mark. But when I saw that in the top right of my screen we were counting down from a minute, I knew something was wrong. These dilos weren't here to play. Running on such little health, I was getting desperate. I did however catch the white one against the rock and was able to inflict a little bit of damage. 19, 18, 17, 16. The clock was counting down to my freedom. Would I survive? The server had now restarted and the next few moments were a blur. I'd logged back in and been immediately attacked by the orange Dilo. Luckily, I'd killed it and managed to get away, although I was on very little health. With the body down, the fighting should have stopped. But again, thanks for the content. Oh my god, he's behind me. He's killing me, he's killing me. No! I'd now joined a call with some friends that were already in my game, just to let them watch this madness unfold. These two dryos here. I mean, look at my health. I'd have to rely on a miracle to survive this one. I just want to survive this! I've killed two of them and they haven't stopped attacking even though there's a body down rule. It's kind of crazy. Oh, oh here he is. It, it was visible how weak I was and the Dilo showed no intention of stopping. I will kill him. I won't rely. It's going to take like one hit. Just keep yourself backed up. Yeah. Oh, they're coming. They're coming. There's more of one of them? Uh oh. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Gender neutral pronoun. I understand. <laughs> okay. I thought we were doing pull rules for a second. That's not fun. <laughs> I'd managed to heal a little bit, but the Dilo was back. Let's do it, fool. Don't go out of your comfort zone. Which one are you? Nah, this is, this is my comfort zone. <laughs> Somehow I was confident with less than 10% health. Jump on my head, I dare you. <laughs> go on. Do it. I think he's probably going to wait until his friends come back. Probably, yeah. Is that also not allowed? Or what? Yep, that's not allowed. I'm not exactly sure what the jump on my head strategy was supposed to do, because I was coming out on top every time. I must turn on him. We're all so invested in this. <laughs> <laughs> but then, just as I'd predicted... There's another one! They came back! What Shut the hell? Oh what the hell? Oh, he jumped on my head. Despite the orange one only just returning, his fate was sealed quickly. Die. Yes! Get out of here. There's another one still. How many times do I have to kill you fools? 
I had spent about 30 minutes on this kind of health and it was starting to get a little annoying. He's just trying to keep me busy until his friends get back, I think. Yeah, it seems like that's what they keep doing. Like one dies and they just stick around till they come back. Yeah. I hit him again, he's nearly dead. Get here, get here, kiddo. Get here, kiddo. Yes! You suck, you freaks. <laughs> Killed like five of you. All right, time to get out of here. I'm running away from the planes now. That was too scary. Oh, now there's a giga right in front of me. How does that happen? How do I get this unlucky? Oh, he's chill. Love call. Love call. Love call. Thank you. Oh, he loves me. In fact, he didn't love me. I was lucky that the Giganotosaurus just had a baby to take care of. The mother simply didn't want to risk hers or the baby's health at such a crucial time. Shocked that I'd escaped the situation with my life, I ran down a nearby tunnel. Upon emerging, our trike's feet sank deep into muddy water. Vines loomed down from each twisting branch, and a substantial mist hindered all visibility. We were in the swamp. I'm sure I hear footsteps. As the fog cleared, it revealed what I could hear. Oh, oh no. A large silhouette sat upon a bank just across the river. He doesn't know I'm weak. I have minimal scars, even though I'm so low. This swamp was home to a large Suko Mimus. The Suko entered the water and pretended to swim away, but I could see right through his tricks. Oh, yep, there it is. Suddenly I was attacked and surviving on such low health seemed impossible. Get out of here. Death scars appeared on our bodies at the same time and our Suko turned to run. I chased and with one more hit, yes. <gasps> oh my God, he tried to ambush us. If I would have crossed that water, I would have been dead right now. Oh, <sighs> I'm not gonna heal with that water. I need to make it to water and food, which means I got across that water and hope there's no other Sukos. Pray for me. Nothing else here. Look at that sunset. Our trike had been through some wars, so a nice drink in the sunset was a welcome experience. And as for the meal, well, that just felt even better. Oh my god, there's a croc right there. He knows I'm too big. Too big to take on. We lay down to heal for the night, and luckily, we did this uninterrupted. Another period of calm. Do you think I can jump in from here? I'm gonna do it. Ooh, he can't do it. He on egg schemes mode. He on egg schemes mode. He on egg schemes. It was now early evening time again, and our trike had made it back to the plains. But on his journey, he'd picked up a couple stalkers. Are you stupid? I know you have a buddy, but this is not the fight you want. I was long past the stage where a couple of you Tyrannuses could scare me. All right. The pair had geared up and readied themselves to fight but one hit and they were running for the hills oh here you go that's what I thought the trike's so powerful just they feel one little headbutt just one and that's all they need to realize that they messed up later that night I heard rustling in the bushes it was raptors planning an ambush can't tell if they're hungry oh my god there's three raptors okay this is gonna be a tough one. A pair of raptors mounted on my back could cause some serious damage. Yeah, they're coming for me. The first one was eager, jumping straight on. But he had jumped too close to the front. Oh, I killed one already. <gasps> <laughs> yes! The other raptors were left to mourn their brother as I walked off into the distance, victorious. That was funny. I don't think I even took damage. After the usual cycle of eating and drinking as herbivores do, daytime had come around again. And as I was walking around, minding my own business, kind of. Hello, sir. 
I'm gonna head into crate. Ooh. Two Allosaurus conveniently stopped their sunbathing as I walked past. They pretended not to be interested in me, but by now, I knew better than to trust these carnivores. They'd looped around and were now on my tail. This looks dangerous, they've just turned. I turned to face the aloes and warned them of what a bad idea this would be. This was by no means an easy fight however, and I had to play this correctly. Before long, the stalemate was up and I received my first attack. Good hit there, very good hit there. Another. Again, for the trike, it was a matter of keeping its horns in the right place at the right time. Okay, okay, that's good bleed from them. I don't like that. Hold up. Another hit. Oh man. Okay, hold on, hold on. If an Allosaurus was behind me for too long, it could offer a significant amount of damage. It was time to use our secret weapon. I charged at the first allo and missed, <gasps> but got a direct hit on the second. Oh, that was a big hit. I was going for the first one, but the second one is laid down behind. I'm trying to get this bleed off if possible. Save my health. Two, one. Okay. The next couple of hits that I got on the allo would now mean that both of them were next to death. Oh, they're both weak. All right, all right. At this point, they retreated, and I was crowned champion. Running away? They're running. They're going. Get out of town! Oh, they've gone into the cave. They're being stalked by a mape and a raptor. Oh, God. Oh, no. I've just set them up to die. Oh, no. Have fun now. I've just committed assisted murder. Oopsie doopsie. This lighting is really cool. I'd only just left the yellows for dead when I found myself in the path of a Giganotosaurus. Oh, okay. And apparently it was hungry. Oh, we have a fight. We have a fight, ladies and gentlemen. I managed to land the first blow on the Giga and got into a good position just behind his body. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be simple if he keeps running around like that. As I was evidently winning the encounter, the Giga began to run. Oh, you messed up, sir. You messed up bad. It did turn around and charge me, which caught me off guard. So I decided to return the favor. Another hit there, and there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now incredibly weak, it was time for the finishing blow. Sharpen horns quickly. That's it. That's it. Oh, you should not have challenged the trike. That was a massacre. I started on low health too. He's so cute. Look how small he is. No! That's my little friend I just made. You horrible little stinking bird. God, you put these days. Manners. It's not there, are they? I need to heal quickly after that because as if these continuous threats keep up how they have been, I'm going to be a dead little trike sooner or later. I wondered if I'd just foreshadowed my own death when I heard growls from the bushes. Am I in the middle of something I don't want to be in the middle of right now? I think I just might be. Oh no, they have a body. Oh, they might want to kill me. Oh, okay. A Tyrannosaurus Rex. Not only that, but it was protected by a Dasplotosaurus and another Eutyrannus. To be the best, you got to be the best. So I went for the Rex. I want the Rex out of here. I had to weave through the Dasp and the UT to solely focus on the Rex. There'd be absolutely no distractions, and it paid off. Yes! I barely lost any health, and the other two were reluctant to fight. Oh, boys! Can't believe I just obliterated a Rex like that. That was insane. 
with our Triceratops the Conqueror, the Tyrant Lizard King was left to rest. But upon the hill across the plains was a sight to fear. Does that Rex want to kill me as well? Surviving one encounter with the Tyrannosaurus Rex was a feat in itself, but two? Now that would be a miracle. A raptor weakened me even more than I already was. The Rex drew closer. And closer still. And when it arrived, not a prayer could reclaim me. I battled on with integrity and did weaken my foe. But in a world so bitter and unforgiving, room for two kings, there were not.